Hi, I'm Anya, also known as Mepity, and today we are going to be talking about 10 ways to avoid wonky looking art. As artists, we've all been there. Whether you're halfway through a piece or finished, you look at your stuff and something feels off. But what is it? I have no idea, just something doesn't look right. And you're racking your brain trying to figure it out, but you have no idea. We're going to be going through 10 little tricks that will help you decide if A, something is actually off, or B, it is all in your head. <laughs> First off, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is... That's right, at www.mepity.shop you can find my art in all kinds of forms, ranging from apparel to prints, stickers, keychains, bags and more. And hey, it's the perfect time of year to be gift shopping, so even if none of this stuff interests you, it might be the ideal Christmas gift for friends or family. Don't feel like spending money? Well, there's a couple freebies available to download. I also now offer my art critique service via my store, so if you want feedback on a portfolio, head on over. How about discounts? To celebrate the launch, I'm currently offering 20% off all orders over $50. Even better, for just $1 a month, Patreon supporters get 15% off all purchases. And there's a bunch of other discounts hidden throughout my social media, so keep an eye out. Want your order to arrive before Christmas? International orders must buy by December 6th. That's tomorrow as of me uploading this. And US orders have until December 11th, so be quick. Thank you for your support, and I cannot wait to see what you get. Anyway, enough fluff, let's dive right in and check that our art doesn't suck. <laughs> Number one, draw the same thing multiple times. Now, this is something you should be doing right at the beginning stages of your drawing, because by the time you've got your sketch ready, it's too late to do this. Essentially, what it is, is you sketch out what you plan to draw, and even if you think, hmm, yeah, this looks good, you sketch it all again from scratch. And you do this over and over again. I typically do it around five times. And with each time, I'm figuring out something new. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the second, third, fourth time is going to be better than the previous times. But it means that you now have more images to compare against each other. This is actually a really good design tactic too, because it means that you are inherently finding ways to simplify and exaggerate different aspects of what you're drawing. You might surprise yourself with each new pass. It's kind of fun, actually, to look back at your old versions of something, because what I do is I like do different layers and then I hide them and then I revisit them and it's like, whoa, I drew that like 15 minutes ago? What? <laughs> By comparing each sketch to each other, you can see what works and what doesn't. And you can actually combine multiple sketches together to make one finished final sketch. Number two, flipping your canvas. I know I've talked about this before, and it's pretty common knowledge at this point, but it's worth saying again. And that is because it is one of the most helpful things that I can do when I'm drawing. This is another point that I suggest doing right from the sketch phase all the way down to when you're about to finish. The way this works is your eyes and brain are now treating this flipped version as a brand new drawing. After staring at something for a while, you kind of become blind to certain things, and now you're no longer blind because it's totally new in your brain anyways. If you're drawing traditionally and don't have like a flip canvas option, you can hold your piece up to a mirror, or you can take a photo of it and flip it in your camera app. I assume most of you know about flipping horizontally, right? But have you tried flipping vertically? Now this can unlock a whole bunch of other types of things, Say you're drawing a person, when you flip upside down, you're no longer looking at a human, you're just looking at shapes and the broader composition of your piece. And you can see if these shapes look unbalanced or if the composition looks kind of strange in some way. This actually works great for typography and logos too. Even though those typically consist of words, there's still a design that needs to be composed nicely and feel balanced. So again, when you take out the recognizability of the letters by flipping upside down or horizontally, you are now looking at a new image and can have a more objective view. Number three, take a break. 
This one is huge, and I think people forget about it pretty often. It's so important to give your eyes a bit of a rest from your drawing, especially if you've spent hours upon hours staring at it. Because as I've already mentioned, you become kind of blind to what you've been working on, and so you're no longer in a state to actually observe and spot mistakes. If you take an hour, three hours, a day, even a week off, you are going to be able to come back with a more objective view and feeling refreshed. It's also a good mental rest. I know sometimes when I finish a piece of art, I feel amazing about it and I'm like, yep, this is perfection, this is my magnum opus. Or it's the other way around where I finish it and I'm like, oh my god, this is terrible, this is awful, something is off, I don't know what it is, and I get super anxious and insecure about myself. Either way, whether I'm on my high or my low, Taking a break means that I can kind of reset and settle and be more neutral about my own work. Number four, squint or zoom out. Squinting and zooming out do kind of the same thing. What it is is it's making your image really small and just boiling it down to its absolute essence. When you squint, it makes your vision blurry. And when you shrink down, it just makes everything too far away for you to kind of comprehend what you're really looking at. Basically, you're viewing your work in thumbnail form. That's a whole other thing. Thumbnails are a really, really good way to get started with a drawing. I highly recommend doing them at the very beginning of whatever piece of art you're making, because then you're able to figure out compositional issues long before you get into the rendering or just like any of the detail stages, meaning that it's a lot easier to fix. But anyway, squinting or zooming out means you can check on the composition of your piece. It also means you can see if there's any weird like light patches or colors that stand out in a weird way. Just anything that sort of looks awkward, really. More or less, it's a test to see if your composition is readable. Now, this kind of thing is especially important with, say, animation, where you only have a fraction of a second to really comprehend what you're looking at. So if you are trying to get a lot of information in, that information should make sense even when you're seeing it like this. A similar little thing you can do, which is a little more involved, is getting your image and making them into silhouettes. If I'm drawing a character on their own, I typically have a base layer for the color, and then I do clipping masks above to get all the details in. So what I do is when I am not coloring yet and I just have that base layer, I make it go to black, and so it's treated like a silhouette. It's a really great check to see if I'm on the right path. Number five. Make your image black and white. What this does is check for value inconsistency. And what that means is it helps you see if there is something that is too bright or too dark or just otherwise catching your attention in the wrong type of way. Our eyes get drawn to the greatest point of contrast in an image. Now, there's a bunch of different types of contrast, but with value contrast specifically, you can see what looks the most different, like in terms of how light or dark something is. If we're in a very dark drawing, the lightest thing is gonna stand out the most. If we're in a very light space, the darkest thing will stand out. Now, conversely, sometimes you can have a piece which has like black and white, like super harsh contrast everywhere, but there's a part of the composition that's maybe more gray or just generally soft. Now that stands out the most because everything else can kind of neutralize itself, like that's the default, and so that's the thing that's different. Of course, contrast is a great thing when you are drawing attention to something specific, but if it's drawing attention to the wrong place, then that's an issue you need to fix. The best practice is to make sure that the highest point of contrast is the first thing you want your audience to look at. Then that should lead the eye to the second most important thing, and then to the third most important thing. When I'm in Procreate, if I want to see everything in grayscale, I go to the very top layer, make it like black, white, or gray as a fill, and then I set the blending mode to saturation. Number six, do an underdrawing. Sometimes we get carried away in the sketch phase and forget to consider what's not on the surface of our drawing. Like we forget how to connect limbs to a torso. 
An underdrawing can be done in the sketch phase or later down the line, and what it is is just marking in the things that we don't see in the final image but are still technically there. For example, if someone is wearing a big flowy skirt, they still have legs underneath that that connect to hips and a torso and so forth. And if you try and figure out what's happening underneath, sometimes you may realize, oh wait, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't work, I've got to fix my anatomy. This is also good to check on things like horizon lines and ground planes. It kind of reminds me of Instagram celebrities that get caught photoshopping their work because they've got wobbly background lines. Can't be having that in your artwork, uh-uh. <laughs> Number seven, check your perspective. Every image with some semblance of perspective is going to have at least one vanishing point. Now, I'm not gonna discuss what perspective is and how to draw it here. We can save that for another day, but Basically, a vanishing point is just where all the lines converge on something. And the standard is to have one or two, but you can have three point perspective, whatever. Often those vanishing points are actually off your canvas. But either way, if you wanna make sure that your perspective is all right, and you didn't use any guides or grids at the beginning stage of your drawing, you can get like a starburst or a like use your perspective guide in your program and try and find where that vanishing point or more is. If you're really, really struggling to figure out where those vanishing points are, then that might be an indicator that you actually have some broken perspective going on. I've actually added a little downloadable Starburst thing in my Patreon, so if you want to use that to help out, you're more than welcome to do so. Number eight, draw in your light sources. A common thing I see with art that looks mostly good at the beginning, but then the more you stare at it, the more off it looks, is that the lighting is incorrect. So something I often do right at the beginning of my drawings is I draw like a little sun with an arrow on it and I place it somewhere on my canvas and it reminds me where my main source of light is coming from. If you didn't do that at the beginning of your drawing, that's fine. You can do it at the end to check to see if things make sense. Number nine, scan for miscellaneous inconsistencies. So most of my points are to help you find things that kind of stick out strangely. And the rest of these are mini points for things that don't have a direct check, or at least not one that I can think of. So here we go. Here's just a bunch more mini things to look out for. Is there a line thicker or thinner than the rest of your lines? Is there a color that just doesn't suit the rest of the palette? Is there a portion of your piece that feels unfinished? Is there an area more weirdly detailed than the rest? Are there any tangents? Are there any accidental marks, also known as artifacts, that you've left on the page? Did you forget to shade something? Is there one part contradicting the physics of the rest of the piece? And finally, number 10, ask your friends. Others may spot things that you in a million years would never have noticed. It's just nice to have another pair of eyes on your artwork. And these don't have to be other artists, they can be normal people too. In fact, it's actually very useful to have a whole range of people look at something. Don't have real life friends you wanna ask? Join us on Discord. I have a Discord server that admittedly I've kind of neglected for a while, but I'm coming back and I want to maintain it more this time. And we have a channel called Feedback Friday. Here you can submit your artwork and say like, hey guys, does anything look off? Just a reminder though, if you submit in there, then you are expected to also give feedback to other people who have submitted. The link to join my Discord server is in the description and we look forward to having you. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's 10 ways to make sure that your art doesn't suck. Now, that being said, your art probably does not suck. We're all growing and learning at different stages. And so something being bad is a very arbitrary term. Remember, compare yourself only to your past self and not to other people. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I make all kinds of art related videos, but I do not have a very consistent upload schedule. So if you want to know when I have uploaded, why not also hit the notification bell? 
Whilst you're down there, why not leave a comment? Engagement is really good for YouTube channels and so it's very helpful to me, but I also love hearing from my community. Don't have anything you feel like saying? Well, why not let me know what your favorite flavor of ice cream is? Why not also check out my website, www.mepity.com. There you can check out my professional work and find out a little bit more about me. I also have my Patreon. Now, there's no pressure to join. I sincerely appreciate any form of support you guys give when that includes just sitting and watching my videos. So yeah, it's only there if you want to, you know, get a little bit of extra stuff or just show your support in a financial way. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, head on down to the description and go check out the cool stuff I have to offer you. This ranges from speed paints and like tutorials, extra downloadable assets, Photoshop files with notes in them. I also do PDF guides based on my videos now, including this one, so that might be useful. You also get early access to my videos. So yeah, why not check that out? <laughs> Editing Anya here to say don't forget to go visit my shop and buy some merch. I also have an email sign up for plushies which will be coming to you in 2023. Okay, yeah. Want to check me out on other social media platforms? I am Mepity across the board. All of the ones that I have are linked down in the description. I've recently gotten a TikTok and I hope to start posting on that soon. All right. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you soon. Bye.